Kimi Raikkonen suffered terrible reliability during his time at McLaren. Despite some incredible drives during his time with the team, he never had a proper opportunity to put a full season of consistent performances together for a strong championship challenge, even though he finished runner-up twice in the World Championship. This didn't deter anyone from being a fan of Kimi though. He quickly gained a cult-like loyal fan base who knew that he could win a championship if he had a reliable machine with a front running team. But it wasn't just the fans who realised this. Kimi Raikkonen caught the attention of Ferrari, and in 2007, he became a Scuderia Ferrari driver. Welcome to A Conspiracy Season 2. The 2007 Formula 1 season was entertaining. Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso formed a rivalry that no one can ever forget. The two wouldn't just battle, but petty actions from Alonso in Hungary have defined the pair's relationship while at McLaren and still sparks heated debates to this day. See, McLaren arguably had the faster car in 2007, but the duo of Hamilton and Alonso tripping over each other effectively slowed them down and allowed Kimi Raikkonen to capitalise on their mistakes. Collecting valuable points to his championship tally, Kimi would win the 2007 championship by just one single point, finally proving that with a decent and fairly reliable car, he could put it all together and win a title. It certainly wasn't easy. Any championship that goes down to the final round against one driver who is already a two-time champion and a rookie who is clearly destined for greatness sooner or later would be a physical and mental war. Kimi's teammate Felipe Massa would finish the season 4th with 94 points, and it wasn't too bad of a season for him either. Massa managed 3 wins and 7 podiums during the 2007 season. Ferrari had a decent lineup going into 2008, but you still felt like Kimi was in the prime spot to win another title and go back to back. As it turned out, this wasn't the case. The title fight went down to the final lap at the final race of the season at Interlagos between Lewis Hamilton and Felipe Massa. Kimi Ryan Raikkonen finished third in the constructors' standings with 75 points. Now, before we get stuck into this, I must state that this theory being presented is not my personal opinion, and any information in this video should not be taken as the truth. Everything within this video is for entertainment and creative writing purposes only, and I have only used opinions in this video which have already been publicly posted in other online forums. So with that, let's get in to the conspiracy. The theory is that Ferrari purposely sabotaged Kimi Raikkonen's title defence and favoured Massa. Why? Simple, to have a reason to drop Kimi and sign Fernando Alonso. Part of the motivation for this was because Spanish bank Santander was set to sponsor Ferrari and part of the deal was to have Fernando Alonso driving for the team. Ferrari would sign Fernando Alonso for the 2010 season, but rumours exist online that the deal was already signed back in 2000. Around the time of the Monaco Grand Prix. Assuming this was true, having a driver sign a contract back in 2008 for a drive in 2010 seems very strange. During my deep dive into this theory, I found a blog post by a user called F1 Bias, who gives their take on the 2008 sabotage theory. The blog post is a long, interesting read, but one section that stood out to me the most was Kimi's alleged comments about his contract during a press conference at the next race in Canada, just one round after Alonso allegedly signed his 2010 contract. The section reads, I still have a contract until the end of the year. I haven't made any decision as to whether I will keep going or not. That's the last contract I have, and we will wait and see during this year and next year what happens. I haven't made my mind up, and we will see. Now, it's important to stress that I only saw these quotes in the blog post, and after searching the internet for the interview, and searching keywords like Raikkonen Contract Canada 2008, or Kimi Raikkonen 2008 Canadian Grand Prix Press Conference, 
I found nothing. Now, that's not to say it doesn't exist and it never happened, but I just couldn't definitively see the words come out of Kimmy's mouth. Assuming he said it, it's strange timing. Right around the time, rumours of Alonso signing with Ferrari were swirling around the paddock. Did Kimmy already know his fate was sealed? The whole theory suggests Ferrari favoured Massa and allegedly made changes to Kimmy's setup, specifically the suspension, without informing Kimmy about it. Though this can be argued Kimi was informed after Michael Schumacher said the following. I think I have to protect him in many ways because in the middle of the season we made some developments to the car, but Kimi simply didn't get on with these ones. The moment we went back on those changes, we got him back to competitive lap times. So what does this confirm? Well, Kimi struggled with development, but Ferrari went back on the changes and Kimi suddenly improved, according to Michael Schumacher at least. The blog post shows a table and focuses on the time from the German Grand Prix where the suspension was apparently changed to the Singapore Grand Prix where the blog claims it was changed back highlighting Kimi only managed 9 points in 6 Grand Prix for the last 3 races of the season Kimi managed 3 straight P3 finishes totaling 18 points and remember this is the old point system but in September 2008 Ferrari would extend Kimi's contract until the end of 2010 squashing any Alonso Ferrari rumor, right? Like any theory, there is an explanation for everything. There are two explanations here. The contract extension was a renewal option that Kimi exercised because he fulfilled his obligations, knew he was on his way out of Ferrari, and Ferrari was set with Alonso. Therefore, he wanted to maximize his payout. Or, the contract extension was initiated by Ferrari to end any early Alonso signing rumors. But if this was the case, wouldn't Ferrari have done it earlier? Well, not necessarily. Waiting until September could have been a smarter option, because it wouldn't look like a rash response when the rumour was first floated around. The 2009 season was poor for Ferrari. In Hungary, Felipe Massa was involved in an incident where a spring made contact with his visor, knocking him out and injuring him, leaving him out for the rest of the season. Some suggest after this, Ferrari put all of their eggs back in Kimi's basket, as suddenly the results drastically improved with a P2, P3, P1 and another P3. From Hungary to the final race in Abu Dhabi, Kimi only didn't score points in two of those eight races. So to recap, what is the motive? Bring on a new sponsor with a driver that that sponsor want and to kick one out. Kimi. De Montezemolo claimed sponsors had no say in driver selection, but they were happy. Why kick out Kimi though? For a couple of reasons, actually. See, in 2008, Jean Todd stepped down as the boss of the Formula 1 team and handed the reins to Stefano Domenicali. When Kimi joined Ferrari, it's said that he had a closer relationship with Jean Todd over De Montezemolo. And you have to remember that the power battle was underway between Todd and De Montezemolo, and in my opinion, Kimi Kimi being close to Todd maybe presents issues down the line in the eyes of Luca di Montezemolo, and how risky would an Alonso Raikkonen partnership be? Nevertheless, some fans online have expressed their opinions on this theory and are convinced 2008 was set up for Massa and the entry of Alonso into the team. Would a Formula 1 team risk so much just for a sponsor and driver, especially a huge team like Ferrari? For now, it remains a conspiracy. Thank <laughs> you.